Tampa, I think it was. Yeah. And, you know, and they're like, hey, this is just a legit ag operation, you know. And it was a legit ag operation in the middle of a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, they promptly moved right up Henry Isles, and they're up there today, and they're, yeah. and they're getting after it. But they're within their zoning requirements now. So. You can right. smell it, too. Yeah, you could. That was the problem. That's part of the aggravation, too, I'm sure, because people probably tell you, well, I have, I have an ag exemption where you don't, yeah, but you're not zoned ag. Right. So we hear that a lot, too, and I've heard a lot, and I've, and I've tried to explain that to a lot of people, but I get the same thing. Before it ever gets to you, I want to do this, this, and this, and I'm ag. So your property's zoned ag. I have an ag exemption. No, that's, right. that's not the zoning of your property. Your property yes. has a, a specific zoning attached to it. R1, R2, A1, A2. What, what is right. your... So that, and it's just, there's just so much that... Yes, yes, because, well, you know, we don't have enough helpers now, we're going to run them crazy. I know, some of this. I know. And, you know, the property appraiser designating somebody as exempt for ag, um, you know, when it's a rural residential situation and it's not really an ag operation, kind of, um, I, I, don't, I don't get it. And I, I feel like we're kind of losing out a little bit because of that. Um, but, you know, they have their rules, and I don't know them well enough, so, you know, I can pick on that all I want, but, yes, you know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I think I, I, I hear you, and we'll see if we can come up with something that might make sense. I'm not going to say that I'll have something perfect. We might have to have another discussion on it, but um, it's, it's, um, it's uh, something that we're going to have to look at. Um, if I may, before we end this particular topic. Uh, I was made aware that the um, contractor licensing board um, has lost two members and we need to appoint two new members. So I'm going to send you an email on the uh, replacement types that we're going to be looking for. So you can send us recommendations and then we can approach them with um, filling out the, the paperwork and so on. So I just wanted to bring that up and let you know. So. Um, are we, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Miss uh, Emily, just on the uh, the page two of this one, the uh -huh. backside. I'm sure I'm not looking at it detailed enough, but it says permits required for construction. Yes. A four, no, excuse me, A three farm buildings, but only for confirmation of building setbacks. Right. That was what I brought up earlier. And then, the but then you go down to nine. What you're saying is, is that. A farm building doesn't have to have a permit. You just want to make sure that we know the setbacks are within what we're asking. And then on nine, you're just clearing it that yes. it's right. not. Okay. So there, there's, it's, it's, again, that's another one of those that we need to clarify. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about that. Do we really need a setback uh, permit for something and, and uh, a survey for, you know, something that's on a large piece of property? So we need assemblies on the survey. You know, I, I will say this. I know a couple of constituents that, and it's been years now that have passed, but they had a survey, mm -hmm. and the survey was, was valid, but it was expired, if you will. Yes. And, you know, so I just think that's something we ought to take into consideration because there's some people that are very impressive with what they keep. I could get a survey done last month and couldn't tell you where it's at, you know. But, uh, you know. Right. What we've been doing is, um, you know, we, we have on the books in certain situations where it has to be a year no no older than a year what we've been saying is if nothing has changed yeah. since you got your survey including your as built and and everything um that it's the survey has is reflective of what's there today it doesn't matter how old it is yes ma'am that, that that's perfect you just answered the question i had earlier that's perfect mm -hmm. you know, if your property has not been altered and you have a survey that, that's that's exactly yes. what i think you should be able to use that survey so that's right because it did say a year it did say a year originally for that. Right. There's, there's, yes. I like the language right. of the permit. That permit don't have a problem with. I mean, somebody's got to check it to make sure it's right, obviously. But this, the biggest problem I had was the, was required for the, the survey. survey which yes. if, if I have a valid right. survey, yeah. You know, if you have a valid survey, yeah. then you should be able to use right. that, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Anything else on this item? I look forward to you bringing it back. Yes. We'll pick on you about it, actually. Just kidding. Okay, going on to the next agenda item. Um, this is uh, a uh, an update to the Florida Building Code um, that um, in, in this particular situation, they are looking at 
The Ms. Simmons, let me ask you a really quick question. Yes. We adopt what your recommendation is here tonight. What is our contracting world going to do? Are they going to lose their mind, or are they already building to these specifications? I think that they are, mm -hmm. and, and I want to know yeah. how is this going to affect our insurance ratings and all that. What's going to be the negative fallout in a nutshell? Well, the, um, the 170 already applies to the majority of our, our county. The 160 applies to the area that we're talking about adding to the 170, which is near Air Glades, Clewiston, you know, the portion of Lake O that we, we have so in we the county. We just roll it all in and keep it consistent. And we want to roll it all in and keep it consistent. And make a motion to direct staff to proceed with the public hearing process to amend the Land Development Code Section 1-7-3 and adopt the preferred map. Second. Okay, just a, a motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Harris. The only question I had on this uh, was I was told that in December they're coming out with a new, new set of guidelines as yes. far as building. Right. Will this be compatible with that, or we have to change it again? Or that no, that this will be. be what we're going to? This we're going to submit this to the Florida Building Commission, and okay. they will be referring to that as our local preference. And by doing it sooner, again, as I wrote in my staff report, we put folks on notice so that on the first of the year, they're not caught by surprise. I, I, I just knew that I was told we, we just had some plans drawn up, and we were told don't accept them, stamp. Plus, come December, they're going to change. So I, that's when I was asking the question, just right. to make sure. That's yes, all. and and just keep in mind that this is for essential type structures, or hospitals, uh, police stations, and those kinds of things. And um, so the only change is for the that particular area, the northwest, sorry, northeast portion of the county, and that's where we're going to see a lot more development. It's by Lake O. There are certain things that um, you know physical things in that area that would make sense that we would be want to be more protective. Perfect. That was the only question I had. I'm good. Uh, is there any further discussion on this? All right. Mark, did I misspeak on something? You're over there <laughs> looking at... <laughs> no? Okay. Where do you say, where do I start? <laughs> okay. Yeah, where do I start? Thank you. <laughs> I know. I know. My, my uh, PUD on, on steroids, that's what, uh, that's what you get from me. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. uh, did everyone get a chance to the old the old business? Does anyone have questions or comments on anything here? I don't have any questions on uh, the old business list. Uh, I, I will speak to Ms. Davis about the stuff that I want to know individually. Okay. Um, I did have a couple other things I wanted to ask, though, but I'll, I'll wait until we get to that time. Okay, is there anyone who would like to address the board at this time? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Swindle. I'm a note. I'll hang on up in the book. Oh, I have a couple of questions too. Oh, can you come back to me? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Bird. I think you should hit just that. I was over here by the COVID queen. I got all messed up. Wow. <laughs> hacking all over, hacking over the whole dang place. You nervous? I hadn't been around you so long. I couldn't help myself. Um, just like to thank everybody. I want to talk a little bit to Tommy. I'm having some issues with one of the things Ms. Market brought up um, about the fencing. I guess there's a easement in between two fences at a residential area she brought to my attention yesterday. So if you can get me get with me afterwards. But other than that, I just have nothing else to add. Thank you. I know, right? Mr. Harris? Say I had a question for Margaret. I got a call today. Guy lives on a dead end road. And he's either got five or ten acres, and then his brother lives next door, and his daddy lives next door. And he wanted to put, leave the house he's living in, build a driveway to the back, and build another house. And he said he couldn't. Mm. And I understand the five-acre deal and the ten-acre deal, but uh, the location, I thought, would have something to do with it the neighbors and where it was located. The most important piece of information that I need to know is what the zoning is and what the future land use category is. And um, in order for somebody to build another home on a piece of property, we require them to do a lot split so that <clears throat> each home has their own parcel ID and address uh, for you know emergency services and for um, taxing purposes. 
Um, and we also, with the lot split, we ensure that they're creating a lot that meets the requirements of the future land use category and the zoning district. Does he want to build one in the back and keep the one in the front? And yeah. Build well, a driveway to mm -hmm, the back. Right. And he and, said, uh, county said no way. Well, it's probably because the uh, property is too small to create uh, a second lot on it. Is five acres too small? Well, it depends on what the zoning is. Well, if you're on a dead end road and out of town, the zoning should be different okay. than if you live in town. Well, what I'll need to know from you, and if you could give it, me the address um, tomorrow, um, we can look further into it. Okay. But the question was up no. Should well, that's what. A special exception? I mean, you can always maybe no. No, no. There's. Um, the, to, to, I, I don't want to speculate because I don't know those answers. If someone lived at the dead end of a, of a road and their kin folks lived this way and they wanted to build a new house this way and put it on the tax roll and make a driveway to it, just personally, I don't see anything wrong with it, but I know y'all do. Mr. Chair, yes, sir. Ms. Is it, is it possible with the zoning, just to, to try to understand, wrap my brain around it, is it possible that it's uh, only zoned to have a one to five uh, density? Is that why? It's possible, yes. Okay. And, and so that's why. be able to have one, one home. single family home dwelling on a five acre plot. Correct. Regardless if they own 25 acres, they could do five yes. single family homes, but those would have to be properly located. Correct. And yes, located, and you'd have to do a lot split, or in, in if it's multiples, you turn it into a plat, but we don't want to go ask there. You this. So you own, you, this is five acres, mm -hmm. five acres, five acres, mm -hmm. 15 acres total. Yes. You have a house right here, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this person is, they, they've gotten plans drawn up. So, so uh, Daryl Harris owns this, and Daryl Harris Jr., no, Daryl Harris owns all three of these. Mm -hmm. But Daryl Harris Jr. wants to have a house on this five acres, but he wants to put it up on the front end. Is he allowed, is, is he allowed to get that gifted? The lot split that you were speaking of, is that is that a cost to said uh, party that's trying to do this? Yes. You have it to is. get you have to get a survey okay. um that that um, breaks out the five well, if it's not already broken out, so it's fifteen acres, you have to get a lot split to create the three parcels. Yes, ma'am. And then from there you have to meet the requirements of setbacks and so on. Yes, ma'am. You can have a shared drive access, but then you'd have to include either an easement into perpetuity or the drive would be a fee simple to the back parties, something you like that. You instantaneously said no to a special exception. Let me ask you another question. It's the, the, the house appears on, is on the five acres and it meets the setback. But mm -hmm. now 15 years from now, they want to put this second house and they want to encroach in here so that they're leaving more of, of a, you know, a, five and a half, six acre area open space because they want to have thoroughbred athletes that are going to run the 100 meters and, you know, 9.7. So they want to leave as much space as possible. doesn't matter. They still have to fall within the setbacks. There will be no special exception granted. Right. They still have to meet the setbacks. Okay. You do have a variance that you could, that that is, um, can be for setbacks. But our challenge with variances is that it has to be something that was not necessarily created for, by your, for your, how am I saying? It wasn't, you did not create the situation. So and obviously in this situation, they are creating it. it. Right. So yeah. it, it, it's a challenge. And if, if we have situations where um, we've had variances where we've approved them with setbacks and they were kind of, you know, created, but the property was uh, unusual shape or something was unusual that it was, um, that we were able to, to feel like it fit. So there are circumstances where that could happen. Who creates those setbacks? The state? No, or? we do. We do. We have zoning districts that have specific setbacks for each zoning district for your front side and rear. And our goal with said setbacks is to bring order to those properties and to try to make it to where there's uniformity or Well, it's it's to provide siting. it's to so you provide separation between, you know, buildings and um, and it's it, it really is more of yeah orderly, and okay. that and that but it's the 
the setbacks can be adjusted and as, as the parcels get smaller and the zoning district are more of the RG3s and, and that kind of thing, those setbacks become narrower, the requirements. But again, so it's in your heart of hearts, this is the last question on this subject. Do you feel that this board would support you if a person came in and, you know, that this is that scenario, there's 15 acres, and they want to build their house as close as they can, but it looks, you know, it's behind there, it's on the back portion of that. That special exception, you, you're so adamant about it, it will not be heard. Why? Oh, well, a special exception isn't meant for that. Okay. Okay, a special yeah, exception is, is uh, for certain uses, to permit certain uses in a zoning district. It's uses. Okay. It's not for your form. There's of no development. tool. There's no tool, or you're saying the variance is the tool that would be allowed to be discussed to make it to where that person can be on right. the property. Right. Right. Okay. Well, they can. If it's a, if say it's a five acre requirement, they could apply for a rezone to have that to a two and a half acre split, couldn't they? Well, it, we would only support a rezone if if it well we would not support a rezone if it was a spot rezoning. So if you have all ag around you and you know ag zoning and you come in and you say you want to do RR, we will, staff wouldn't support it because it's that's spot zoning. That's not um, you know it, it's uh -huh. the same thing as you know rezoning it to commercial in the middle of residential. I mean it just it's it's not intended to be a fit for um, when you have everybody else around you is one thing and then you're coming in here and you want to create another thing and it's it, it it's usually not a good fit so well I understand you know. I'm just asking in this situation if it's is all family there and this gentleman's on a dead end road and they own all that property could that is, is that not something they could apply for well it depends on what the future land use category yeah, I understand. is I'm just asking there, I'm so it's not a it's not a dead no there's Maybe a possibility there, to try to figure it out. Absolutely, and yeah. and and I think I know what he's talking about, but I don't want to be. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Sure. I was just asking. I, I, I know there's certain ways that you just got to work things, and I get. And it. we uh, do that. We we right. try to get as creative as we can and stand on our heads and to see what we can do for folks when it comes to this. And um, you know, there's uh, one of the things I think we've talked about before was to revise the variance requirements. But on the other hand, if we're constantly having variances, then maybe what we need to do is to look at those setbacks in those categories, those zoning categories, to see if they need to be adjusted. But I don't know that, um, um, well, that's something that we could right. do if it was, uh, a, you know, preference of the board. And it's it's hard to think about, but one thing that Ms. Emily, I don't know if she agrees with me or not, but it, in another reason that, that is there is to protect that current landowner in that home. Mm -hmm. Because today we're a family and we're going to build another home for the family. But I know of, I know of, uh, of a very, very good friend who did that. The family had a fallen out. They moved out of the other house and they were side by side. And then some folks moved in. That was just an absolute horde nightmare for everyone. And they wound up, the other family had to sell their house and move too. So it's hard to convince them of that, but it's really to protect their interests as well. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of uh, one of the intents of it. Yeah, it's 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 that and its value as well. Um, you know, believe it or not, these you know some of these regulations are to protect the values of your property. And um, I know uh, putting ag aside, um, it's you know the other zoning districts that, that it's important um, that we have uh, these requirements. Yeah, that's right. You have to have rules. Uh, uh, last board meeting we had a trailer for emergency management that was a lot of money did we end up buying that well no I sent um, some backup to you and I think um, Commissioner Wills um, regarding the other quotes and so no we haven't bought it um, it was going to be on this agenda and I took it off okay um, is, is are we set up in the event a storm forms in the basin do we have multiple uh, shelters I know we had that memorandum of understanding tonight, uh, but um, we're wearing masks. We never had to do that before. Um, what's going to happen? Do we have a, for instance, have y'all have y'all discussed that to great detail? For the sheltering, yes, ma'am. In the case of the storm, so with the school, so there there would be more shelters open, and or they would use more of the shelter. So previously, you know, everybody would have been in a certain auditorium or a certain area. 
And so um, there was an act of Congress one storm to get Clifton High School opened, yeah. and I'm just. I'm just thinking now we're going to have to have all of those volumes. Right. And then and then this rolls into another question that I had, which was, um, why are we not able, why are we not able as a county right now to expend dollars and cents to make uh, financial upgrades to shelters? And, and it's 100% a legitimate COVID cost. Tell me why it's not. So for CARES, you mean? Yes. Or so the school has some CARES money, and some of their monies are, are for their facilities in general to get ready for school, but it would also serve for the same purpose yeah. for sheltering. Um, for the cities, I know Randy's here, and I believe that they discussed, um, we've seen some communication with the cities as well as the county to be able to, if the, in the event that we have another storm, that we would potentially help facilitate additional folks to help serve in the shelters no 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 that's not what i'm talking about okay. what i'm talking about is right now at close to middle school on highway 27 if you can it's not a hard argument it's a very easy discussion point to say if the wrongs if hurricane dorian comes 45 miles this way it's sitting on the east coast right so you're going to have the bell glade population south bay population commissioner swindle what was the population i went to the close high school for i think it was irma but i'm not sure and I didn't recognize anybody in Clifton High School. Yeah, they true. weren't from here. They were from Lehigh. They were from all over God's creation, right? Why can we not today tell you, uh, put an RFQ or an RFP out, and we want to put a standby emergency generator system at Clifton High School, I mean, Clifton Middle School. We want to have an automatic transfer switch. We want to spend a half million dollars, 30 days, between now and 30 days, to make that facility, which is one of the newest and hardest facilities in our county, be able to be utilized during a hurricane. Why can we not do that today? And the justification is quite simple to me. We, we have to, right now we only have Clifton High School that, that is able to meet a requirement. Or take Clifton Middle School out of it and make it Clifton High School. I don't care. But we need to get more aggressive on that. Why, why can we, what stops us from doing that? I don't know that anything is necessarily stopping us from doing it. I think it. it's just the will of us to be able to do it. So And then and then listen, so so we don't get the Clifton LaBelle argument. Let's go do it in LaBelle as well. Let's let's do that. I, I I've been thinking about this. I haven't called you on it because I know you have enough irons in the fire, but I want y'all to tell me why this is a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Right now in both facilities we have to set a temporary. And we don't need to do that. No, I agree 100%. We need to take, take our temporaries. We need to take our temporaries. We need to set them up. But we also need to go ahead and, and have the standby electrical generation system. By the way, Quality Electric would love to bid on it. Just so full transparency, I ain't going to touch it. You know, I ain't trying to get more business for me. I'm trying to make sure that when Mayor Randy Humphreys from Fort Myers is freaking out on an emergency management call with the state of Florida, he's like, hey, I got to evacuate X number of people because Governor Scott just said we got to leave. Hey, y'all come on, come straight down 80. We'll put you in a middle school. We got it. It's set up. Or, you know, we, we had to take people. You know, the one thing that I'm worried about is we still don't have a special needs shelter in Henry County. We have to go to Muse, right? Mm -hmm. Ms. Davis, I think we need to, I think we need to be actively pursuing that. And I think, you know, I don't think you're going to like this, but I think we have the ability to allocate seven figures to front load it, and we're going to get that money back through CARES. Well, and the, so there's two different paths. So okay. there's CARES that we, we approved the plan at the last meeting, and then we still have PA yes, for COVID and so public assistance. And so um, so what I would want to do is talk to our EM manager and then um, probably talk with the DEM and see what the best path would be because obviously we'd have to get approval to make sure that they would cover it um, and see if we couldn't look at doing that and and i think that potentially we might be able to do it through pa i think director moskowitz would be all over this and then we can pay the 12 and a half percent match through the cares yeah and then it would be a hundred percent covered so that might be and so um you know there is some discussion about the december 30th deadline for cares being extended that hasn't happened yet but it may or may not happen but with pa it's a little a little bit of a different animal so i think we would need to be mindful of that um from a timing perspective, Miss um, Davis, I mean Miss Davis, I'm, I, this wouldn't be, this would not be a 45. This would be done during this hurricane season. 
if if a if you were to put this out on the streets right now, I guarantee you there's local contractors, you know, between Taylor Electric and Air, between Pittman Electric, and I don't know who over in LaBelle, but on the Fort Myers area, and then there's a gentleman that puts in a lot of standby generator systems out of the Highlands County area. They'll they'll do this with their eyes closed. And I don't care what their workload is. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a better quality product and we'll be able to serve more people. So yeah. we'll look into that and we'll get you updated. Okay. This week. Keep in mind now, just 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 I'm oh, sorry I could interrupt. Go ahead. Keep in mind on these schools, the more the more facility that we use, it won't be under generator power. So that's that's other thing you right. need to address. If we're gonna use more of a facility, we're gonna have to find out a way to get generator power to that. Which yep. is where the schools are set up now, the Bell High School is the gym. That's the only place that's underpowered. They try to use a cafeteria that's mm -hmm. not working. Mm -hmm. well, now the, the generator there has been burned up for years. Mm -hmm. You come to close to middle LaBelle High School. School. Yes, it's been the, burned up for years. Then LaBelle High School needs to be a point of priority for us, in my opinion. Well, that, that's, that that's, needs to be a 125 no to a 250 kW system. You ought to call up Kevin McCarthy in the next 48 hours, and you ought to say, Kevin, what is, what is your dream utopian situation look like? And then, and then build it from there. Now that has no generator. Well, now, the, the only thing I'm requesting is there has to be an automatic transfer. And I, and that, that, I don't right want there. a human going out during a storm to have to flip something. I was going to go to that next because I'm that human. And you got to yeah. get blown around out there. Yeah. Uh, right. Middle school in Cluston is is a manual switch. Middle school in LaBelle is a manual switch. They need to be changed to automatic transfer. We do have quite a bit of information on LaBelle High School because we had brought some folks in a while back to potentially try to transfer that into a special needs shelter. So we would right. have generator power throughout the entire, or not the entire facility, but more of the facility. So I think we do already have a lot of that information for LaBelle High School. And then Mr. Chair, I just want to know, I'm not picking on them, but I, I do want to know what is the update with regards to our generator, our standby generator system. We had that contractor, mm -hmm. you kind of queued that up and gave them piecemeal. Mm -hmm. They got us all up and running and we're online. We feel good about it. So I, after the last meeting, I think is when you brought it up, I, I asked Rick about that and, and they have been tested. Um, and so I don't, I don't know that it's not a contractor, if you will, that that's tested them, but um, he did confirm that everything's been tested, um, has a battery or, or whatever. And, and they did it last season. And they that, that's they our biggest season. thing every year. No, 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 and I remember it, they were going to put a load bank on our systems. They were, so they were going to make our generators have to get in the weight room and work out and produce to us to show that they can, they can perform. Mm -hmm. did, we, did we do that? So I, I thought we did not do that. I thought we discussed that nope, and decided not to do we that. Didn't do, we didn't do the giant pro, We didn't do the yeah. giant scope. Okay. But I remember you... We you, did have someone come yes. and look at the generators yes. and tell us what we needed, but we didn't ever... They never I, load tested them. I was going to say, please oh. help me. Yeah, I, don't, I thought we talked about it, but I thought we decided not to do but that, only to have them mechanically going through. He said we had enough people in-house to check the generators. Not to load no, test we said we, we, what Mitch told us was we don't have anybody in-house. When we were making original yeah. budget cutbacks, we cut that person out. Mm -hmm. And so, so it sounds to me... Once again, it sounds to me, and I could be wrong, that we we do not know the status of our, and it was like, I remember the list was like 28 generators. It was a pile, yeah. But we, well, let me just, let me, to be fair. Okay. So I asked Rick about it. He said, yes, we have tested all the generators. We know where we're at. We know where we are. Um, and so I would... I asked the question, that was the answer he gave, and so I can get you more detailed information. Yeah, I would love to see that in the and, form of and a document. And I will send so that, that to you in going. writing. And so, yeah, please. Yeah. And Ms. Burgess, I, the, 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 just to, you know, the way they test the generators, they test the oil, the, water, oil, the water, they run it for 30 minutes and they put batteries in it. We have never load tested them, so I just, that, when you ask that question, that's, okay. that's what happens with us. Is there anything country out? Uh, that, that generator, the fuel tank was bad, so we have to set up a temporary fuel I, tank every I, time we use it. I think they put a new one in. They get a new one yeah, in? Yeah. I, I was over there a couple, yeah. couple that, that weeks ago. That was the only I believe it's good. And, believe it's and the transfer switch. Okay. Most of our switch, switches are, are manual switches. So. Mr. Turner did hit the nail on the head when, when he said get with Mr. McCarthy, because I know that he's got a really good grip and had some very distinct plans. And so it may be good to merge with what he's already doing mm -hmm. and, and has in mind. So that, that's a good plan. Well, I need to get him and Alan together. It's going to be your best bet. Alan's been doing generators for 35 years. And I, and I think they have been. I think you'll find that they have been, and they've probably got a more solid plan than That's mm -hmm. the connection you need than to make. We're aware of here. I think we need to spend a million dollars, and we need to spend it quickly. I know that sounds, that shocks people, but it 
you know, not when they're in a safe place. No, <laughs> it's it's we've never had this opportunity, and we can justify it all day long. Oh, okay, Mr. Turner, you're trying to be a money grab on the federal government. Why? If you want to put that moniker on me, feel free. Everybody else is doing it. We need to help out Henry County right now and get our fair square of it. And we we were hammered, and we the storm grazed us, and we were sending people in special needs over to Muse. And that just, that, that kept me up. I was so uncomfortable about that. And then the volume of calls that I received from our colleagues in the region looking for help and saying, do you have the ability to send people in the event this thing shifts again? Can you help us? And the answer was no. I, we can't even get the doors unlocked. So no, I can't guarantee you anything. You know. Well, for this last storm? Uh, Jennifer, okay. it was probably three storms ago. Okay, okay. I'm old and... Okay. <laughs> Just making sure, because we were ready to open if we needed to. We just we weren't there for this last storm. I just wanted to no, know. nobody Everybody. called for this last right. one. Everybody was right. so happy. Yeah. So I I don't think it was Dorian. I think it was Irma. Irma. I think Irma, it was Irma. Irma. Yeah, Irma was the big one. Yeah. Everybody was. Panicking. Dorian. Everybody was on edge and it had that feeling, you know, as any moment it could turn, but it didn't. So. Is there anything in the basin right now? There is one. There uh, is yeah, uh, invest ninety five or that's where you're something like that. Yeah. That's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Spunner, did you get your notes? I, I found them, but then I was scared again, so I put them back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, so I do want to just say, you know, Mr. Yeah. Commissioner Wills, you did say that, you know, we don't get to get together very often. So, you know, the fact it's been crowding a three-hour meeting, you know, we, we have things that we have to discuss, although sometimes I apologize to everybody that we drag them out longer. We probably need to, but that's the only opportunity we get to really banter back and forth and come up with uh, workable solutions. Um, I had made the note earlier when I was looking at my, my agenda. Um, are we late or are we, it seems like by now we've already kind of talked about our legislative priorities. Are we, is that coming up? Are we going to set those out pretty shortly? Yes. As a county? Yes. Okay. That'll be up. Okay. That'll be coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Um, and, and the only other thing was on the old business was uh, I would really love to see before I get booted off the board uh, an electronic version of a, of a book. I know you're all working on it, but. So I have an update from today from Ryan sent this morning and he's got, um, I forget the name of the um, actual software program, but he's going to, within the next two to three weeks, he's going to start training oh, for awesome. everyone. So everybody will be contacting you and good, good. going over how it's going to work and, and so forth. So that's, that's soon. Great. Great. Okay. Awesome. Training for electronic board book. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're slick. Yeah. They're neat. Is it going to be on an iPad? I don't know. I don't know. iPad, laptop, whatever you have. The I haven't one, been trained yet. So the one I for the know. school board, whatever device you have, you can do it with an iPad, I set think, it up right yeah, there, you're I good to go. It'll be the first time that I allow the county to get me a device because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to put anything else on my personal device. It's, it's my brain has sure. already overwhelmed. That's all I have, yeah. Commissioner Wills. Thank you. I really don't have anything tonight either. We're going to close out. Meeting adjourned. It's board docs. <laughs>